Today I've got a sort of crazy combinatorial optimization problem based upon subsets and bijections of a certain set. So this comes from a United States Math Olympiad from the year 1998. So let's dive into the statement of this problem. We want to suppose that we have n subsets of the set containing 1, 2, 3, all the way up to n. And we'll name those subsets a sub 1, a sub 2, all the way up to a sub n. Furthermore, we have an element of the symmetric group Sn, which we'll call sigma. Let's just recall that that's just a bijection from the set containing 1 to n to the set containing 1 to n. In other words, a 1 to 1 and on to function. Next, we'll define the following set which is built out of these subsets as well as this bijection. So it's denoted by d sigma a1 up through a n, and it's going to be all numbers between 1 and n, so that m is not an element of a sigma m. So that's a bit to unpack. And we'll unpack it with some examples, but before we do that, let's look at the goal. The goal is to find the maximum number of sets of this form as you work over all possible different collections of subsets of one through n. And that's of course as sigma is running through all of the elements of the symmetric group. In other words, all bijections. And now let's look at some examples. So we'll start off with an n equals two example where our sets a1 and a2 are just the singletons one and two. So let's notice here, d associated to the identity bijection is the empty set. That's because 1 is in A1 and 2 is in A2. But D associated to the bijection, which takes 1 to 2 and 2 back to 1, is the entire set 1, 2. And that's because 1 is not in A2 and 2 is the image of 1 under this bijection. And then similarly for 2. Now maybe the thing to notice about this, which will give us structure for the larger case, is that none of these d sigma sets are equal to our original a j sets. So that's important to notice. And furthermore, if we collect all of the d sigma sets and the a j sets, we get all of the subsets. Okay, let's look at a little bit more complicated of an example, this n equals 3 example. So here we have a1 is 1, 2, a2 is 3, and a3 is the empty set. So we'll first notice that d of the identity is equal to 2, 3. And that's because 2 is not an element from a2, 3 is not an element from a3. But this cannot include 1 because 1 is an element from a1. Then let's look at d of the 3 cycle, 1, 2, 3. So that's the map that takes 1 to 2, 2 to 3, and 3 back to 1 we'll notice that that is the entire set. And that's because one is not an element of a sigma one. a sigma one in this case is a two. One is not in a two. Furthermore, two is not in sigma two, which is a three, and three is not in sigma three, which is a one. So that's why we get all of the numbers here, one, two, three. And again, you can check that none of these d sigma sets will be equal to our original a sets. So it looks like if we fix these a's, then the number of d sigma sets is the total number of subsets minus the different a j sets. And so that's a guess based on this first example, this partial second example, which I urge you to work the rest of the details out just to get a feel for how this is going on. So now let's take this guess and we'll work it towards a final solution. Now that we've done enough exploration to see the structure of this setup and get a guess for the total number of sets of this form, which will allow us to form this maximum later, let's start our final solution with the following claim, which we saw hinted at on the last board. So let's say we fix subsets a1 through a n, then we want to show that for all bijections sigma in Sn, d sigma is not equal to a j for all j. Okay, so how can we do that? 
Well, first we want to make the following observation within this proof, and that is D of the identity bijection is not equal to AJ for all J. Okay, so now how could we do that? Well, let's first suppose that we have M from the set one, two, up to N, and notice that all of these M's are either in this set D identity or not in the set D identity. So let's look at those as cases. So our first case is M is in D identity, but let's notice that that means that M is not in A sub M. That's because of the condition that builds this D identity set. But now we found an element M, which is in D1, but not in AM, but that means those cannot be the same set. So we have D1 is not equal to AM. Now let's look at the second case which will be M is not an element of D identity. But if you're not in D identity, then that means that you are in AM. But we've again found an element which is in one of these sets, but not the other, which means that these two sets cannot be equal. And since we started here with an arbitrary M, then that means these sets are never equal for any of these sets AM. Okay, cool. So now let's maybe use this observation to prove the finality of this claim. And we can do that with the following fairly obvious equality. And that is that D sigma A1 up to AN is the same thing as D A sigma one all the way up to A sigma N where this is D identity there. Okay, and that's just again by this definition over here, but we know that that is not equal to A sub sigma M for all M by this first observation. But then since sigma is a bijection, that means that this is not equal to AJ for all J because as you range M over all numbers between one and N, you will, rate, you will range sigma M over all of those numbers as well. Okay, so that finishes the proof of this claim. And this claim actually gives us an upper limit for this number. What's the upper limit for this number? Well, it's gonna be the total number of subsets, which is two to the N. So why is it two to the N? Because the set containing one to N has two to the N subsets. I think we can take that as a fact. Minus the number of the subsets from the list A1 through AN. And if they're all different, that would be the number N. So to reiterate, this two to the N minus N is an upper bound for this maximum. And now we just have to produce sets A1 up through AN that achieve this upper bound. Okay, so let's get to that. Now we're ready to finish this off with the construction that we can achieve this maximum here of two to the n minus n, and we can do it with the following example. So let's consider n subsets of the set one to n, which are just built out of the singletons. So that means a1 is the singleton containing one, a2 is the singleton two, a3 is the singleton three, and so on and so forth. And in order to get to this number, we want to show that we can find a sigma in SN, in other words, a bijection from one to N to one to N, such that D sigma equals B, where B is any subset of one to N, except for the N defined above. But how many guys are there right here? There are exactly two to the N minus N. So this construction will show that we can achieve this upper bound. Okay, so let's do that. If we fix a B in this power set one to N minus the sets A1 through AN, all we have to do is find a bijection that gets mapped onto this B. And how can we do that? Well, I think there's probably a lot of bijections, but this is the one that I will take. So we'll take B to be equal to B1, B2, B3, all the way up to BK. 
So it's a K element subset. We might as well put these in order, although we don't have to. So we have one is less than or equal to B1, which is strictly less than B2, all the way up to BK, which is less than or equal to N. And then let's define sigma from one to N onto itself via the following loop. So we'll take B1 to B2 to B3, and then all the way around to BK, which goes back to B1. So it's this K cycle. And then outside of this loop, it's the identity. So let's maybe write that as M gets mapped to M if M is not equal to BI for all I. And now the claim is that D sigma is equal to this B. And that's actually not super hard to show just with double set inclusion. So let's write this D sigma A1 up to AN is equal to this B. Okay, so let's first suppose that M is an element of D sigma but let's notice that that means that sigma of M is not equal to M because otherwise we would have M in A sigma M, which means M could not be in D sigma. So that's how that works. But if M is not fixed by sigma, then that means that M equals BI for some I between one and N, but that tells us that M is in the set B. So that gives us one of our inclusions. So which inclusion? We have shown that D sigma is included in this subset B. So to finish this thing off, you'd wanna show the set inclusion in the other direction. But maybe I'll leave that as homework. And that's a good place to stop.